Support for the Retro Gamers Podcast is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below-the-waist grooming. Manscaped offers precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. Manscaped recently launched the Ultimate Men's Hygiene Bundle, the Performance Package. Join over 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you. 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code RETROGAMERS at manscaped.com. And Larry, are you even listening? I sure am. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Retro Gamers Podcast, a chilly episode for some reason. Uh, episode number 279, Larry here. And Anthony here, why is it a chilly episode? I, I don't know, why are you so tall? What? Oh, uh, well, I, th what is <laughs> well, no, I, thought, I thought it would actually be more fun if I was looking down on you. I, well, I, no, nothing new there. Uh, <laughs> uh, this, yeah, no, this will be yeah, explained a little on? later. What, what's going on here? Is this why you're cold? That a little bit, a little chill. It's always a little weird after a while. Um, we'll, uh, but I'll explain this a little later. But hey, look, I look twenty pounds younger and forty pounds heavier. So hey, there is a difference. You're twenty pounds younger and forty pounds heavier, got it? Because <laughs> I found this. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I'll discuss my thing. Uh, what's going on by you? This is like a this is like a different position uh, that we we angle on you here yeah we got a new we got a new angle but just briefly because um i'm i i am going to point out that there is something behind me yeah and, i just uh, is... i actually did a little shopping you know you... How, how you you're usually the one i always go shopping and then when i go shopping it's always a big surprise right <laughs> but, then when I, but then when i go shopping i usually don't buy anything like monumental or big or anything <laughs> like that uh, however i did i did do something pretty hefty this time oh so I had said that um, I had said that if this was released um, at some point, I would buy it because it's the one thing that I've always wanted to have in my house. So I bit the bullet because there was a sale at Arcade One Up and I would like to reveal oh, wait a minute. my oh, arcade game. Look at that. Dan, 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 dan. That's all we're going to do with that so we don't get sued. Uh, wow. Yeah. So I'm sorry, I'm, I'm messing with the camera a little That's bit. That's all right. Show it off. But um, yeah, so I'm going to bring you in on it. First off, uh, it comes with the stool. Oh, it comes with the stool. Mine didn't come with the stool. Yeah, this, well, you know, buy the four-player one, Larry. So <laughs> That's a gorgeous stool. Yeah, it comes with the stool. So now whenever I play the game, that I, you know, I have the honor of knowing I'm sitting on Cyclops' face. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> uh, it also came with the riser on the bottom. Yes, yes. Uh, apparently, Cyclops was the center of the game. I don't remember that, but all right. No, he was not. But he was the leader <laughs> of the X Men. So, um, unfortunately, I can't show a lot of the side art, which is really awesome. You can kind of see it there, but like because I got this thing wedged in. If you look, at yeah, the you. Stuff. So, <laughs> did you? Actually, good thing your shelves uh, expand. Yeah, or no, separate, I, I should say. Shelves move, so uh, so yeah, so it actually worked out really nicely. Actually, um, not for I, nothing. You no, got it. You, you fit it in there real well. Yeah, no, I mean, because I got my shelves. I got three shelves. Yep, yep. I had just enough space. <laughs> you so it's did. Like it's almost like it was meant to be. It really... <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyway, so yeah, looking at this four-player, I got the four-player one. Yeah, gorgeous. Which is great. Uh, again, all the original artwork from the actual arcade is here, mm -hmm. you know, on the sides. I know you can see my reflection in here. That's all right. And then, of course, if I turn it on. Uh, we'll get the boot-up screen here in a moment. Wow, I can't. You know, it's I. I am shocked. I, I can't believe you. Uh, I bet that I actually went through. Yeah, it. you went all in on this one. I, you know what? I debated, but I just had to. I just had to. I'm trying to set it up. So hey, can... not for nothing. With that larger, there's the arcade one up logo. With the larger four player um, base there, much easier to put a camera on there and not. Oh, that is actually an awesome opening. Yeah, it's a great open. A My great arcade one up doesn't have Ms. Pack, man. What? Mine just starts. <laughs> Yours oh, is like an elaborate. Well, you know what? This has a whole open. It's well, first off, it's got three games. Those yeah. are. I was wondering what the other games were. Yeah, so you get X Men, Captain America, and the Avengers, and then uh, Avengers in Galactic Storm. So okay. So again, were the other two fighters or just Galactic Storm? Galactic Storm was a fighter. Uh, Captain America and the Avengers is a side scroller, kind of like X Men. 
Oh, oh wow. Do you remember that one? That's I do. Not, no, now I do. Now I do. Nintendo, Super Nintendo Genesis. Yes. Oh, I remember oh, all yeah. that. Yes. And of course, who else would you pick when you play this game except Dazzler? Dazzler's the worst. Oh, my. I know it's not, it's, it's not close. It's a little too close, but I can't do anything about that. No, that's all right. Oh, my gosh. I mean. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> I normally skip over this part. Nope. Yes. Yay, Dazzler. Dazzler's the best. I hate using Dazzler. So, all right. So, first of all, right off the bat, how's the gameplay feel? Oh, super smooth. Getting... I mean, I, it'd be smoother if I wasn't using Dazzler. But... <laughs> all the, all the weird... Guy here. The, <laughs> the weird four-player controller that's way off on the side. Yeah, like I, I purposely, I purposely picked player four so you wouldn't see as much of me on the screen. No, no, actually, that's a really cool idea. Oh God, God help you! If you had the six player, you'd be behind the cabinet. Yeah, I don't, do they? I don't think they didn't make a. Single I don't think player. they would. No. But, now this is the but, four player single screen. Four player single screen. I mean, it's super smooth. It plays just like. Awesome. It's just like the, uh, the original. And what's cool? And listen, if anyone out there who uh, is listening or watching the show um, and has an X Men cabinet like this, you know these things are Wi Fi, so you can play yes. multiplayer with other cabinet holders. Yeah, so you can um, you can change your availability. I can leave the game, which I'm going to do right now. But yeah, so if you do the live option. Um, so they have your network set up and everything here. Okay. Social. You can choose if you want to be invisible or available. Gotcha. Um, you can I'm find. Sure. You can make block, friends and stuff. Block probably. people. <laughs> block people. Which is <laughs> what I'm sure you would do. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so it's, yeah, it's just really, really cool setup. And again, also you got three games. Since you, you don't know Captain America. I, no, no, no. I remember. You know, I think I got it confused with something else. But let's take a look at it anyway. Yeah. Um, let me ask you this: How Daddy East? Um, <laughs> and we're soon. <laughs> oh, look how tiny he is! Sorry, right, I forgot about that. Yeah, that that's kind of oh, you only get you got four options in this one. I remember this now. Oh, I chose Hawkeye. All right, then let's go. Bye, bye. Ah, the Red Skull. All right, come on, let's go. Just checking out some gameplay right now on the YouTube channel. I remember Hawkeye looking like that in the movies. Hawkeye looks like this in the comic books. <laughs> Where's my mean power? Shoot. I don't remember how to play this. <laughs> it's also tough to play and talk at the same I, time, trust me. But anyway, exactly. but that's the whole thing. All right, cool. Very cool. So yeah, and then uh, we'll just uh, we'll turn it off and we'll get back to the show. Yeah. Now that's awesome. So let me ask you the <laughs> that powering off. Right. I, you know what's funny? When I turned it off the first time, I said it like that in the altered beast voice. <laughs> Instead of power off, powering, power off, powering up. So powering let me ask you a off. question. Um, <laughs> did it just say power off? No, no. Oh, 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 that was you. I, okay. I said power. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, as Anthony uh, goes back to his original uh, where I seated where I position. really belong, and as you can see, it's now. Oh, that adds that adds a lot to it. I like it. Part of, part of my backdrop. So, do you have a uh, like an elevator in your building or something? No. <laughs> so you had that lug that up. I didn't. With... Have to, I didn't have to lug it up to delivery person. Oh, did... <laughs> you think? No, I didn't pick this up in store. No, 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 no. I know that because that's the thing that you said that you ordered that hadn't gotten delivered yet. That was the thing I said that I, yes, that's what I was waiting on. Um, and actually, the people who, um, whoever delivered it, I would like to thank the delivery person because they actually did bring it up the stairs and leave it in front of my door. Well, that's good. I mean, yes, they should anyway. Yeah. But, um, because I remember mine, I had to shove mine up the stairs. Uh, oh, yeah, no, no, I had that too. Like, I bought, uh, I think when I bought like my bookcases, like I found them at the bottom of the stairs and I'm like, lazy. <laughs> but then, how yeah, long? 
I'm, I don't lug, I don't uh, carry boxes all day, so I'm sure you get tired after a while. Especially with your shoulder. Um, how long did it take you to put together? Uh, it took about a little bit over an hour. Okay, um, makes sense. I, I did have a, a friend of mine who lives in the same building that I do. She Very good. Over, she came over and helped me out because she loves to put furniture together. She's like one of those IKEA people. She's like, I love putting furniture together. It'd be like, well, I got a piece for you. <laughs> well, this so, one can kill you if you do it wrong. <laughs> yes, exactly. So, um, so yeah. So no, it took a little bit over an hour. All right, cool. Um, and cool. again, went really slow because I did not want to break anything or mess it no. up, dealing with the screen and circuit I, board and all that. I stuff. did the same thing with mine. And again, it took about an hour. I, I, I tried starting it by myself. I'm like, this ain't going to work. Then I went and I got Mario downstairs and he helped me with the rest of it. Um, and But yeah, but like once you finally put it together yep. and then when you finally turn it on, it's like, oh. this is awesome. It's amazing. It, it really, it's like a dream come true. It really is. And now I like, yeah. And now I just like, it's like whenever I have like, you know, a free 10, 20, 30, yeah. minutes, like just pop it on, play for a little while. Literally. Or just sit down and play all the way through. This is true. Oh, I can't wait to come over and finally get the high score. Oh, yeah. Cause that's not going to happen. <laughs> well, it's got to because yours is still on mine. <laughs> and forever it will stay. <laughs> um, the other cool part, uh, what I'll mention about this cabinet, a lot of the newer cabinets from Arcade One Up is yes, it's wireless. So it can also update wirelessly. Yes. Yeah, Whereas right. I have to pull my cabinet out, take the back off of it, plug a PC laptop because it will not take Mac. A okay. P I have to find a PC laptop, plug it in, do the update if there is one. It hasn't been mm -hmm. lately, uh, and then put it all back together and shove it back against the wall. Yeah, so it sounds too complicated. Very much. It's annoying. Yeah. So, but all right, very cool. Well, I'm glad you got that. That is awesome. Thank you. Yep. And now I'm Burke. <laughs> aren't we all um yeah i um actually fun just a couple things i want to show off i'm going to do it over the next couple of weeks um because i keep forgetting to prepare to bring it over mm -hmm. but i just want to show off some things um one of which is up here they were from birthday presents and i know that's been a couple months ago but i got three in particular that like some people like they really i was like wow this is interesting well two in particular uh, but this is the first one I wanted to show off. Friend of ours, actually Glenn, uh, who's been on the show before. Oh, that's really <laughs> cool. So that was very, very awesome. Just a custom, like a Nintendo logo, but my last name, Mormon. Same number of letters as Nintendo, so it worked out oh, perfectly. Nice. So I um, just wanted to show that off, Glenn. Yeah, mine wouldn't uh, work. What? <laughs> It'd be very small. <laughs> There'd be a lot of a lot of empty space. Oh, no, that's well, right. They might, they might just shorten it. Well, no, I mean, I can always, um, I can always add to it. It'd be like. Ninripo. <laughs> that's true. That's true. So uh, over the next, like I said, next couple of weeks, I'll show off some of that stuff. Very but, cool. Um, all right, cool. Anything else that you had picked up or just kind of? That's not enough? Uh, well, to me, no. <laughs> well, that's your problem. <laughs> all right. No, uh, did I pick anything else up? Not to my, well, I mean, not video game related. I did go, okay. to, the, oh. I did, I did go to the Renaissance Fair yesterday. Oh. Um, and I do cool. love me a good Renaissance Fair. Unfortunately, they don't sell anything video game related. Well, I don't think they were around back then. Yeah. No, no. But uh, but I could nerd it up a little bit and just, uh, um, I did. Oh, find, I saw that yeah, thing. I did, find yes. this, I did find this really cool shop. Um, and it's one of those um, wood shops where they mm -hmm. kind of laser cut different wood designs out of wood. Um, I was really hoping because normally when I go to the uh, Renaissance Fair, I beeline for any Legend of Zelda merchandise. They do have some. Sell, yeah. yeah, a lot of them do sell. Like, because remember when we went way back, what, yep. seven years ago? Oh. Um, I had bought the Hillian Shield with the two swords. As and, did I. Yep. And there were a bunch of people that were selling different, I, um, uh, different Zelda merch. I could not find any Zelda merch this time. Interesting. So I was a, a bit bummed. Um, but I went to this wood shop and um, they had a great map. Uh, they, they had maps of different uh, fictional locations. If you give me five seconds, I will go grab what I got. Go for it. So, uh, so as we look, uh, yeah, Anthony's getting a very cool collection there in the background. I mean, that X-Men arcade's really now kind of popping that background. And Alfie is off to the right of him. So <laughs> really, I'm really getting retro. So I got this really cool. Oh, that's wood. bigger than I thought. Yeah, I got this really cool wood map of Middle Earth. That is awesome. Laser cut, Laser cut map Middle Earth. of Middle Earth. That Very is cool. gorgeous. Again, not video game related, but it's awesome. No, but it's well, kind of. You know, they're all Lord of the Ring games. And you know, it's one of those things where it's like, it smells like wood. Yes, right? <laughs> I did that, I think, with my uh, 
With my Zelda map, my Legend yeah. of Zelda map. I really wanted a Zelda map. They did not have that. <laughs> but I'm very happy with my Middle Earth map. So. Very good. Very um, good. So yeah. So uh, that that concludes my shopping. All right. Fair <laughs> enough. Or another, but this is this is the big one. So yeah, totally. Yeah. Absolutely. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> All righty. So with that, we'll uh, we will move on. Yeah, we'll move on at this point. And uh, I think this so, is like the first week ever where I showed off shopping stuff and you didn't. I, I yeah, there's really nothing. I mean, the only thing I purchased, and I'm not even going to show it off, was just I, I found some new storage um, for my physical uh, CDs oh, nice. and DVDs, which are mostly games and some movies that just haven't transferred over digital yet. So. Um, that was about it. That's really all I did last night. I was just kind of convert. I had some books, but I put them into these smaller items to make them a little easier to get to and everything. But now I got to figure out where I'm going to actually put them. So, <laughs> um, besides that, though, lunch. yeah, honestly, uh, besides that, though, nothing else. So, yeah. kind of a busy weekend anyway, you know, yeah. unrelated to gaming. Right. So. Very cool. But, uh, but speaking of which, and uh, uh, something that I, I think we might have spoken about in the past. Um, touched on at least, or at least not this deep into it as we're going to get to this week. Mm -hmm. Um, last week we talked about, uh, we mentioned Sonic Origins. Yes. Which, uh, awesome, re you know, game coming out in June for basically all the platforms. It's, and I did a little more research into it actually. So I got a little more information on it. Okay. Um, that kind of answers my conundrum of like, why is there four games in it and not five? Right. Uh, cause again, it's got Sonic one, two. Sonic CD, and then Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Yep. And my complaint last week was like, oh, where is the standalone Sonic and Knuckles game? Um, and, and I think you mentioned it before, and I never really heard this. Honestly, ever since the game came out, I never heard this thing where Sonic and Knuckles was supposed to be part of Sonic 3. Yes. Yeah, I, again, I never... So I looked into it. It was quite interesting. So basically, again, they they... they the game Sonic and Knuckles is supposed to be like the second half of Sonic the Hedgehog 3, but at some point during development, something happened, and then they just ended up splitting that game off Sonic and Knuckles into its own game. Right. And to your point, when I was like kind of jokingly, I'm like, oh, did they plan Knuckles 20 years or 10 years in advance for the lock on technology? Uh, and you're like, no, they probably just, when you put the game in, it, it completes the game. And you're right. Whereas when you play Sonic and Knuckles with Sonic 3 locked on, that is the true game that was intended yep. to be released. Um, I thought that was fascinating. I never knew that. Um, the Sonic 2 lock on, they just, I guess, had fun with. And Sonic 1 locks on, but you don't play as Knuckles in Sonic 1. Right. Um, I thought you did. It's just, if you put any other game locked on to Sonic and Knuckles, you just play like endless bonus rounds mm -hmm. from Sonic 3. That's all it was. Um, so yeah, so I thought that was interesting. And then I looked into it a little bit more. I forgot Sonic and Knuckles was released on the Wii Virtual Console back in yeah. 2010. Uh, and if you had Sonic 2 and Sonic 3, you can digitally lock them on, mm -hmm. uh, which is cool. But then, you know, as we talked and, and even mentioned last week with some other releases and everything coming out, you know, the argument can stand, forget digital versus physical. Because yep. they're actually debating whether or not Sark Origins is going to be a physical release. Well, actually, as of right now, it's digital only. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. so and it's digital only. They they have not committed to releasing a physical copy. Um, now the question would go: with these re-releases, mm -hmm. would you go like, do you mind just getting the re-release, or now do you have an itch, or if you already have the game, the original cartridge version or CD version, whatever? Yep. Would you just stick with that, saying, you know what, I'll pass on this, I already got the games. So bottom line, re-release versus original cartridges. Ah, uh, yeah, and that's an, it's an interesting debate because it's a debate we've had a number of times, maybe not even on the show, but like we've always talked about how you, uh, for a very long time, you were always about, I'm getting rid of my physical collection, I'm just, I'm just uh, digital only, downloading digital only, and I'm like, well, I'm like, but those are the originals, you know, how can you part with the originals? But, and. Mm -hmm. Now that you collect again, you kind of you kind of have a bigger appreciation for the original cartridges, while at the same time still having the opportunity to play um, re-releases digitally. So, um, so I guess it's a it's kind of an interesting debate because it really comes down to your drive to keep the original consoles out too. 
You know, it's like, it's very easy for me to download a copy of Super Mario Brothers, Sonic the Hedgehog, you know, games that I used to play on my um, Nintendo, my Genesis and all that stuff. I go very easy to just download it for a few bucks. And then it's just sitting on the current console I have hooked up. There's a lot more work involved if I'm like, oh, you know what? I want to play Super Mario Brothers on my original NES, on the original cartridge. Um, you got to have that hooked up to your TV. And then you're also dealing with, um, is there lag? Because those consoles were not built for our TVs these days. So I think it's like a huge debate. As a gamer, just like straight up gamer, if I'm just thinking like selfishly, mm -hmm. um, I prefer the original cartridge. I'll always prefer the original cartridge. There's something about just the um between the nostalgia and the um muscle memory because mm -hmm. it's like when i play like mario is a perfect example it's like when i play mario playing it on any other console feels off mm -hmm. because i'm not holding an nes controller mm -hmm. and even if okay. you buy, and even if you buy the nes controller for like because you know you can buy an nes controller for the switch mm -hmm. right it still doesn't feel the same there's something about it that's just different <clears throat> Um, and it could just be, again, that could be the nostalgia factor that pops in. But, um, but for me, yeah, for me, I'm always, I'm always about the original. It's a preference now based on feasibility in terms of, you know, where you live, how much space you have and everything like that. I have no problems playing the re-releases digitally um, just for sheer space saving reasons. Yeah, um, which is all, and that's my really my biggest reason for going digital was all has always been space. I had really yeah. had nothing else to do with uh, otherwise. Um, like I'm not hell bent against physical releases. Um, it's just if I can, and yes, I've caught myself even with some new stuff. Like for example, we talked about uh, you had mentioned a few weeks ago, uh, limited run, uh, doing a print of Snow Brothers, the release yes. of uh, for the Switch, and I held off on it thinking let me see if it's going to be released digitally and lo and behold it's in the future releases for the switch nice, nice. so and again that's more of a just you know don't have storage room for a physical copy plus it's a little bit cheaper you know so there is a little bit of saving money i've done that a lot with a lot of the european releases uh that i ordered mm -hmm. um but now going into this one where we have this release or re-release again actually what really also made me think about this is so i'm going through here i go so i was telling you know as i just mentioned a mere two minutes ago um i'm putting all my physical cds into these new cases yep. these are the new cases these were actually out a while ago i remember having these back oh in my the gosh day. Like, yeah no for real but these are like new you, versions did you jump back to the 90s <laughs> i had to buy four of these wow. um very back to the future so basically what it was is it's a case that holds 80 CDs individually uh, and you have like this slide rule on the bottom. Yep. So you, and that was the other thing I had to do last night, catalog where all the CDs are in these things. So and I had to label have, the ends. Do you, I was going to say, did you catalog them like on your computer so you know where they oh, are? Oh, no, yeah, 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 yeah. No, even that's digital, um, you know, in case something changes. And then you slide it to the number you want. You lift the case and da-da, there's the CD. What did I just have to ask you? What did I, I pick? What did you, what we did you Sports want? Resort. There you go. So I'm going through this. I'm putting the games in. And I realize I must have moved one, two, three or four different copies of Sega Genesis collections. Oh, well, that makes sense. <laughs> because they always came out on, like, almost every console. Yep. Um, I think the best one was on the PS3, if I remember. There was, like, 80 or something games on it. Oh, um, cool. The one on the Switch is terrible. The one on well, the one on the Switch, PS4, Xbox One, like that yeah, collection, yeah. awful. R uh, Rich it, and I tried playing those games online, awful. The, I mean, the lag on those is yep. terrible. Whatever that newest release was, yeah, they just did a bad job. Like, I'm oh. happy I have the physical copy of it because you can play, uh, you know, and that's play without issue. But yeah, no, no, totally. On, yeah, they're the online play is just inexcusable so and the other versions were good don't get me wrong, the other versions were fine yeah. there was nothing wrong with them or anything so but i'm home there i'm like wow i got like four copies of these and not literally the same they were the different releases like for the different generations of consoles mm -hmm. so and then meanwhile i have a couple of them already so that though proves my point as far as games that they might have just thrown together 
to put as a compilation yeah. versus them rebuilding from the ground up. Because like with Sonic Origins, they went, they recoded everything from the ground up. Yep. So these old games will work on new systems, will work on new TVs the way they should be designed. And that's cool by me. Yep. Um, and it's for that reason that I don't mind purchasing again these collaborations. Same with the Turtles collection. Mm-hmm. I have maybe half of those games already on physical but and knowing how good those other konami collections were like for cap uh the uh, uh, contra and castlevania yep um again i don't mind so having it on on my current gen console because a i play those more often um b depending on which one you get like if you get on the switch you can play on the go it's cool stuff like that but c also in a way it kind of preserves the older carts because instead of constantly playing because there is wear and tear when you play these old cartridges what yeah. taking them in and out of the systems just physically turning them on they have a lifespan um they truly do and at least with the these releases again as long as they're like done properly and 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 coded properly and everything i would much rather go with these re-releases um like final fantasy so final fantasy 7 in fact, yes. again, I was looking through and I'm putting it away. I have Final Fantasy VII. I got the three discs. And like for a minute, I debated. I'm like, oh, maybe I should just to save time. I mean, save space. Just get the digital version. Right. And I'm not talking about the remake. I'm just talking about like, those remastered ones. The remastered. Yeah, exactly. And I'm like that. Not so much like for me personally, like you mentioned yours personally. Like if it's just a remaster, eh, that's one thing. And I'm like, wouldn't it be enough if I already have the, the disc. Um, same with the Super Mario collection. The Super Mario 3D All-Stars. Mm. You know, yeah. 64, Sunshine, and Galaxy. Yeah. Um, again, they re... Well, there's always a debate with Nintendo. Did they redo them? Did they just throw emulations on? I don't know. They play fine by me. Um, fine enough where, like, I almost sat there going, oh, maybe I can get rid of Galaxies and I can get rid of Sunshine. The physical oh, wow. copies. Because... It's weird. Also, I have. You can send uh, sunshine to me, by the way. <laughs> well, let me ask you this also, which just dawned on me. So forgive me if you don't have an answer. Do you feel different? <laughs> Do you feel differently about cartridge, old cartridges versus old CDs? Like to me, a CD is still digital right. in a way. But like a cartridge, I don't know. There's something about a cartridge. Like I'd rather keep this. You know, I'm holding nothing in my hand for those listening. Yeah, you'd I'd rather keep, keep the, a cartridge than a, than just a straight up CD. No, um, like they're the same to me. All right, I get it. I get it. Because you know why? Because CDs have been like kind of a mainstay with us for now. What twenty since you know, the 90s. 30, like thirty years? Yeah, yeah. So like we're we're used to seeing things on CD, so that's why it still feels current to you. So I understand. I understand your thinking. Yeah, it makes sense. I do. Yeah. Um, because again, things don't come out on cartridge, you know, you, you know, the closest we have to a cartridge now is like an SD card for the switch. Yeah. And the rare releases from like limited run and stuff. Yeah. The releases from limited run. Um, but yeah. And I, I just think that's why you think that way for me, it's more along the lines of when, you know, when a game came out and having a physical copy of that, like knowing that I have like my original copy of final fantasy seven. Gotcha. Like that's special to me because I bought that in 1997. Mm-hmm. You know, I didn't buy a re-release of it in 2021. So I think, um, yeah. So for me, like I do look at that differently. Okay. That kind of makes, I can see that part. So it's like with the CDs and also again, a lot of my CDs, which I don't, and I, I say this with no regret whatsoever again, because of space, I ended up, getting before i got rid of the cds and and <coughs> excuse me made them digital i'm talking movies and music as well yeah yeah before that i got rid of the cases and i put them into those storages like you saw all the old school storage you know yes. uh zipper books um again i have no qualms about that i did it with with everything um now it's just a matter of almost convenience of being able just to turn the system on and there are all my choices right in front of me yeah um almost like a streaming service everything's right there 
So I don't have to worry about it. It's not getting up, though. Sometimes it's just a physical getting up and yeah. <laughs> putting a game in. Well, no, and there's, but, an, appeal, there's an appeal to that. I mean, yeah. my, uh, I, it's funny because I'm, I guess when it comes to like um, updating or archiving, or whatever you want to call it, I'm a lot slower than you on that because I like, <laughs> to keep, I like to keep things. But I think it was like maybe a year and a half ago that I took my DVDs and put them in a binder. Oh, the wow. cases I was fully intending to throw out. I really <laughs> was. I was like, all right, I go, it's 2021 or whenever I did it. I forgot when I did it. It was during the pandemic. And I'm like, all right, I got to save space. Got to say goodbye to these cases. I didn't throw them out. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me you have boxes of empty cases somewhere. There, there, I have two storage bins full of cases. <laughs> that is phenomenal. Yeah, but, but again, again, at least it's not like, oh man, I need shelf space for all. Of oh, these. true, true. You know what I mean? So it's true. like I did consolidate in a way because the cases are in storage. Mm -hmm. So if I ever want to put a disc back in the case, because I, I get it. Look, I get it. These DVDs these days really aren't worth much. So it's not like I'm like, oh, I need the case. I have to sell it. Oh, we used to. Yeah. Forget that. Just displaying them. That was back in the day. You wanted to display. Yeah. You wanted yeah, you to peacock wanted to and show. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's the same thing with your video games. Like I love yeah. displaying all of my games on shelves. Um, but with the way that things seem to come back around, perfect example. VHS tapes are now like, a, like collectors' items. All of a sudden, seriously, Everybody, right? Yeah, everybody's got, well the same way. Uh, the same way vinyl came back for music. I'm like, I'm fully anticipating the same thing to eventually happen to DVD. Um, so now I'm hanging on to the cases because I'm just thinking of sheer value. Um, my, okay. my, my music, my CD cases are gone. I got rid of mm -hmm. those a long time ago, uh, but I still have the CDs uh, music wise. Uh, video games, though, you could not make me get rid of any of the cases for my video games. Never. Now, let's let's uh, put an asterisk on that one. Back in the day, like the cardboard wow. cases. Different. different gone. Back in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I know yeah. what you're talking about. That. No, you took a game out and, you know, especially Nintendo, they gave you a nice little black sleeve to put the yes. game in. So it's like, what do I need the box for? You, you know, it's funny uh, when I was when I was, again, doing this thing where I was getting rid of boxes, you know, the GameCube real of all the systems, the GameCube was the one I had the biggest struggle over a because of the little CDs. So it's not like I could find something that easily right. stored those like but. I still ended up getting rid of the cases and I ended up buying like small CD jewel cases. Oh, okay. So I have a stack, which is, trust me, takes up a lot less space than what otherwise would have been there. But since rebuying games, mm -hmm. um, like I'm looking at the shelf all the way over there, which hopefully in a few months you'll be able to see again. Because I might be going back to the building in a few months for work, um, which I can't wait for. Um, you know, besides Genesis, you know, those, they came in their own cases. So, like the Sega CD games, I'm holding on to in the case. Like right now, anything new that I buy, when I say new, meaning like a recent purchase yeah. of an old system, those I'm holding on to, and that might be the nostalgia factor. That might be because of doing this here, yeah. uh, the podcast. Um, but for the most part, if if I see like a, a re-release, like for example, this Sonic Origins, the Cow the Turtles Cowabunga collection, mm. even now here's one more kind of version that i'm curious about on your part um retro bit gaming in conjunction with rare uh and also being released through limited run and castlemania are releasing on a physical 8-bit nintendo cartridge re-releasing battletoads double dragon yes first of all awesome game yeah one of the best games that were out there and a very fun crossover especially one that you never expected to happen mm -hmm. so um, I have a version on the Genesis, um, but they're, again, specifically releasing an 8-bit version. Gorgeous green. I think we might have showed it off. Yeah, uh, we yeah, we did. That's right. So now let me ask you this. That's a new cartridge for a Nintendo system. New cartridge, so you know it's going to be all updated. You know it's going to work. Mm -hmm. There's no fancy difference in the gameplay. It's the original gameplay. Yep. Would you be above... Um, what? Uh, when I say upgrading, meaning buying a newer version that yeah. just got released of an old game. If you had, I don't know if you do, Battletoads Double Dragon on NES. Right. I don't have it. Okay. Um, but 
Here's what in that scenario. Here's where this is what it. And this is going to be very just real quick. And you know, a situation like this is going to be very few and far between. You know what I mean? Like they're not re-releasing games. So take that into consideration. Right. No, taking that into consideration, um, I would still my my response. I think is still the same though. Um, What I would probably do is for any game that they were re-release on the original console on that cartridge. I think what I would do is I would go back and see how much it would cost me to buy the original. Hmm. Because if the original one is like, you know, a rare game that's going to cost me several hundred bucks. Yeah, no problem. I'll buy the re-release because at least I have a physical cartridge version of it. Mm -hmm. But if the difference in price between the re-released one and the original copy isn't that much, I'd rather go with the original copy. Now, also, though, would you factor in the fact that, again, you know, like a lot of these original copies, sometimes you have to get in there, you got to clean them up, yep. where you know this new version that's being made in 2022 will work right off the bat. And again, I'm just, this is just assumptions. You know, would, would that play into a factor, knowing that you're not going to struggle with an old game? No, I don't think okay. so. Because, okay. um, because, first off, if I'm buying it, I'd like to think that I'm buying it from a reputable place so that it's a working cartridge. Oh, no, of course. Um, but I'm well, you know. You know, but I'm just saying, though. I'm Agreed. Saying. Agreed. Um, and I think even if you buy a new cartridge, again, as time goes on, new cartridges will wear and tear as well. Oh, true. But 30 years from now here versus true. 30 years ago to now. Right. I, I th- But there's just something about having the original. No, you're I, right. I, I will always default to that. Per- another perfect example is... Um, not a perfect example, but um, they, because uh, they didn't release it on the original cartridge, but um, I bought the Zombies Ate My Neighbors collection from Limited Run. Yes. Now, yes. I have the original on Super Nintendo. I have the original cartridge. Absolutely love that game. I still bought it for the PS4 because my PS5 is what is hooked up to my TV right now. Ah. And so, you know, again, it's the same thing where you have your digital library on Switch. I bought Zombies Ate My Neighbors so I could play it on my PS5 mm-hmm. because that's what I have hooked up. But if I had my Super Nintendo hooked up, I'd be putting in that Zombies Ate My Neighbors right. cartridge and playing it. And that one, as an example, actually, they did, Limited Run did release a physical Super Nintendo cartridge. They did, but I... So yeah. would you have, well, no, I'm just saying, like, would you have thought about maybe upgrading, again, just for the new, but I guess that goes back to the last question. No, nope, same I answer asked, because, so. yeah. and I already have the cartridge, so I'm good. Okay. Yep. Even like the fancy dancy, like uh, uh, physical, like the sh- difference look in the shell and stuff like like aesthetically, aesthetically speaking. No, aesthetically. Okay. No. All right. Mm-hmm. All right. No problem. Um, all right. Fair enough. Uh, you know, like uh, one final question I present to you, um, then I'll give you my thought on it. Yeah. So we'll use the turtles as an example because there's 13 games in that Cowabunga collection and I yes. cannot wait for it to come out. Um, like I said, I already have like four or five of them and there's some other gems that are on that collection. Like for example, the Hyperstone heist on Genesis, yeah. which I don't have, which can go not super expensive, but it can be a pretty penny. Yes. Um, with this collection again, price not being a factor. Okay. Would you still go to purchase the old cartridge? Just to own, even though now that you have it on this new collection. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. There's an appeal. To me, there's always the appeal for the original, even if I have it um, on an updated system. Okay. You know, uh, yeah, there's no, there's no issue there whatsoever. Because again, it's, it's that, that becomes part of the collector, you know, the collector. That, that, I hear you on that one. Yeah. Um, Like me, I'm going to be a hundred percent honest with you. I was even debating and again it's it's a it's a storage issue it's nothing else Mm -hmm. because i've redone my gaming case like four times already um because i just get new stuff so i need the room i was debating even like maybe selling back some of the turtles games wow that i have that are not like like i don't have an original box for Mm -hmm. which actually would be none of them uh because i know i have turtles one turtles two on nes i have the first Game Boy game. I might have the second Game Boy game. Um, and then that's... Re- oh, and I have. Uh, I think I have Turtles in Time okay. on Super Nintendo. So when you say sell them back, you mean ship them to me? <laughs> well, maybe. just uh, In other words, just to, you know, that's just less storage I have yeah. to worry about. Um, so, I don't, and again, it's a debate I was thinking of. And on the flip side of that, where, like, to go the other way, where I already have a digital collection, now I'm wondering about the physical one. Right now, Limited Run has an open 
and, and again, folks, I just want to preface this. Um, you're welcome. Um, because of my actions with Limited Run, oh, they now do an open uh, pre-order as opposed to like set, like we only have a thousand of these. So look, I'm not saying um, that I'm a hero, uh, but I'm just saying. Not, well, okay. So let me welcome. confirm. Let me confirm that. You are not a hero. So I'm just. And you are not a hero and you are not responsible for what Limited Run I'm, did I'm when they changed their format in terms of buying pretty things. Pretty sure I read it in the newspaper. So. No, I'm, I'm pretty um, sure you, you read it in a newspaper. It's just up in your mind. So uh, whatever, so, whatever, whatever you print out there in your brain is uh, <laughs> is what you're thinking of. Um, but yeah, no, not true at all. Oh, thank you. Um, Limited Run right now has an open pre-order for the Contra collection, physical. Mm. And I love Contra. Don't get me what wrong. Now, granted, this is the physical release of the digital release of the Contra collection. You know right. what I mean? Which you already own. Which I already own digitally. <laughs> Excuse yeah. me. But like, do I repurchase it now physically with the cool add-ons? Add-ons meaning like the physical, like pins and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, they actually, on a side note, they got some sweet like uh, skate decks, contra okay. skate board decks that look awesome. Uh, that's cool. Um. So now I'm thinking about that. Like, do I just get it now as the collect? And again, that's something that I have to think about because I have contra and super C in box. Mm -hmm. I even have Probotector in box actually. Nice. So you know. Things like that. So bottom line, or at least with me, and it always boils down to personal preference. And again, with me, it's not a, it's not a, like a, 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 it's just more of what physically can I keep here? Um, I'm always going to side with digital, admittedly, for the most part with new stuff. Mm. Um, and I definitely, as long as they don't just throw it together as like a quick emulation. Again, I use Sonic Origins. They did it from the ground up. Mm -hmm. um so it's gonna work i have no problem even if i was forced to sell for some reason you know all my old video games i'll be happy with that collection to move forward and you know consider it you know part of legacy so yeah no and that's fair i mean um i think um i think because of technology and the way people can create games now um it's a lot easier to put an old game out on a new platform Oh, totally. You know, so, but it, but again, but it's still a game. It's still like a physical release of a game. So it all depends on your preference. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think what you said is totally fair. It's a very fair assessment. But uh, except for one thing, I mm -hmm. will say this: um, if anything should force you to sell anything, you sell the pops before you sell the video. Games. Another debate that I've had to go through. Yes. Just in case, but you know, I, 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 I know, but I've settled it for you. You sell the pops <laughs> before the games. I don't know. I mean, you know, it's like having three kids. You can, you know, you can afford to lose one, but I don't know. Okay. Wait, what would you sell first? Your pops or your virtual boy? <sighs> the broken virtual boy. What? <laughs> no, no, you're fully, you're fully, the fully functional one you bought after you cried. I, about I mean, the broken one I said to you. <laughs> I mean, I I don't know. I mean, monetarily speaking, I'm gonna get way more money for the pops. But mm -hmm. you know, if I had to, if you're talking about me selling the entire pop collection versus my entire Virtual Boy collection, yes. Um, well, I mean, what would you? If do? I needed money, it's gonna be the pops. But that's you know being desperate. Mm -hmm. But I don't know because I still have a lot of pops on order. Mm. Wow. Well. Anyway, <laughs> I think that settles our debate. So let us know in the comments. Um, you know, let us know what do you prefer the original cartridges, the re-releases? Do you mind the re-releases? Um, are you hell bent against the re-releases and like no original carts only? Let us know in the comments wherever you follow, and uh, we'll be right back. Support for the Retro Gamers Podcast is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below-the-waist grooming. Manscaped offers precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. Manscaped recently launched the Ultimate Men's Hygiene Bundle, the Performance Package. Join over 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you, 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code RETROGAMERS at manscaped.com. Uh, and how you uh, hold up with your Manscaped package. 
No, I'm holding up really well, actually. It's been uh, it's been it's been a really good experience. I'll be honest with you. Um, cool, cooling breezes, like I said. Yeah, well, I was gonna say. I mean, you you went all out with uh, with your manscaping, I see, because it's how long has it been since you've gotten rid of the facial hair? Um, I, I can't remember. Yes, for those listening, uh, this is a baby's face right here. So uh, very chubby oh, baby. Yeah, I was gonna say a couple of babies. <laughs> oh no, very much. <laughs> um, so it's been a while, but um, I just saw you know with the product um, that you know we're working with Manscaped and they were uh, awesome enough to uh, send us to try out. You know, uh, all, all joking aside, the um, the the lawnmower 4.0 isn't necessarily just for one general area on your body. No, definitely not. Yeah, no, it's it's available for other things as well. Um, and I kind of did that on purpose um, because as we see here, this is the performance package 4.0 that you could pick up. Uh, again, using the code RetroGamers, uh, you get your, your percentage off and free shipping. Um, the Lawnmower 4.0, I mean, that I had a thick beard and it went right through it like butter. Oh, really? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's just super easy. No, oh my god, so simple. Um, and then on top of that, also the weed whacker that yeah. comes with the performance package. I have to say, I'm getting, I'm getting a lot, uh, I'm getting a lot of use out of the weed whacker. Uh, <laughs> I thought the lawnmower, I, I thought it would be the lawnmower first because, mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm, I'm a wildebeest. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, no, no, no. The uh, the 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 nose trimming is mm -hmm. fantastic. The nose and ear yeah. trimming is awesome. Yeah. And then what Very I nice. did, which I purchased separately and um i highly recommend uh the their safety razor the plow 2.0 mm. yeah i saw that on the website and i was interested in um in purchasing it but you beat me to the punch yeah now this is uh personally speaking uh, i don't use cartridges anymore for razors i've gone away from them a long time ago so i use these doubles edged uh, safety razors the okay. single razors and this one from manscaped honestly i absolutely enjoy the weight of it just helps uh, shave easier, shave a little bit quicker, uh, and even a little bit closer than my prior safety razor. Okay. Yeah, right, and well, it's good. That, that's a good endorsement for me to get it. No, no, totally holds up real well. Uh, it does come with three blades, um, which you can always order more as well online. Of and um, but yeah, the combination of those is what gives you this right here. There you go. Now, um, with the, going, going back to the. Going back to the lawnmower, though, um, you were saying that it was just a, just a really smooth experience when you were um, yes when you were shaving your face. Um, well, I, I think um, did you have to use the LED light? I guess was my question. Like how dark how dark was you it? know? It's funny you say that. As soon as I started to do it, the power went out oh, uh, yeah. in my apartment, and it was nighttime. No so way. it was the only thing that helped me get right through it. I was able to see everything, <laughs> so it worked out real well. Oh God, you're such a good liar. Uh, <laughs> but um, but yeah, no. I was just gonna say with the lawnmower, the um, that with the skin the skin safe technology, the waterproof nature of it, um, and the LED light. I mean, it's it's just like a it's a good kind. It's a combination that works. That's what I was no, gonna go for there. No, no, no. You're right. No, it really is. I did just get out of the shower when I did it, so you know, not having to worry about uh, you know getting it wet or anything like that was yeah. Was because a big that's just not life. fun. You don't want to electrocute so. No, um, no, no. And, so. the, and the uh, the weed whacker that I use also has um it has the skin safe technology so that you know you don't wind up uh you know bleeding out of your nose. It, it uh, reduces uh, both of them honestly. The, well, re yeah. the re reduce nicks, snags, tugs, and trust me, all over your body you don't want nicks, snags, and tugs. <laughs> no, definitely not. <laughs> no, those just hurt. Yes, no, totally. Um, and at, well, and then after you shaved, did you use the uh, the ball deodorant on your face? <laughs> <laughs> no, that I did not do up there. Um, <laughs> but you're right, though, because you do get also in the 4.0, uh, 4.0, in the performance package 4.0, yes, you do get the crop preserver below the waist deodorant and crop reviver below the waist toner. Um, I, I haven't used those yet, but I definitely plan on doing it in the very near future. Okay. Well, that's fair. Um, I, I <laughs> the deodorant actually smells nice. <laughs> okay, good as it should. Not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. As I turn a little red in the face. Uh, <laughs> if you're watching. Well, definitely these are you know I, we we again you know we appreciate uh, these items that Manscaped sent us uh, the yeah. safety razor the Plow 2.0 that I purchased separately uh, big time. Uh, I feel, and again, folks, you can get it yourself um, to take care of yourself. You know, 
the time to take care of yourself is now and go to manscaped.com 20% off and free shipping with code retro gamers. All right. So we're going to start bringing this into port, but we got some news to talk about. I believe uh, we got a little bit of news. We don't have a lot of news this week. So. Retro news. Okay. No, 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 we don't have no? a jingle. Oh. No. We Didn't we used to have a jingle? Uh, no. No, no okay. you like to you like to create jingles, but they're all no. Great. We had a jing. We had one created for us for a while. I think we had a jingle for VB sucks, but or it might have been I don't know something. Well, in any event, anyway, retro news. Uh, let's go. Yeah, let's just go to some retro news. And again, not not a ton of retro news this week, so it'll be pretty quick. Uh, a couple of retro birthdays I wanted to throw in oh, to, okay. into the news. Um, so uh, one of them I wanted to bring up was specific because um, you had talked about um, your dad actually liking these types of games. Um, so, uh, we are celebrating this week, the 20th Hmm. retro birthday of desert strike return to the Gulf on Game Boy Advance. Oh, GBA. Okay. Yay. Which I know that's not the one your dad plays, but I just thought I'd bring it up because maybe you should get your dad a Game Boy Advance and desert strike return to the Gulf. I already, I can already hear him complaining about the size of the screen. Your complaints as a child for handheld systems, he will be complaining about in his current age. <laughs> you know what? I fully support that. <laughs> and actually, I would fully support anything your dad says or does. <laughs> Whether you did or didn't. In front of him, you do. Did, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I fully support you. Um, no, the GBA, uh, Game Boy Advance version was actually pretty interesting. I, I wanted to get my hands on it. It was a good kind of reversion of it. But uh, still 20 years, which means the other ones are older. Good Lord. Well, it makes yeah, sense. Yeah, well, the other ones are significantly yeah. older. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah. So, retro birthday to Jesse Strike. Okay. Um, and then the other one, which is probably a bit more monumental for a retro birthday, um, celebrating 30 years, Ooh. released on DOS, Whoa. and probably created a whole new genre of gaming. Um, and I'm talking about the 30th retro birthday, Wolfenstein 3D. Wow, really? 30 yeah, years. Yep, it was released May 5th, 1992. That really, I mean, like, my memory is muddied as far as, like, the first-person shooters between that, Doom, uh, and the other one. Well, uh, this you know, predates Doom. Doom was it, that's right, it does, yeah. yeah. Doom, Doom, was la- Doom was later. It was later, yes. No, you're uh, right. Now yeah, I think about so, it. Um, but, yeah, no, no, this this was an awesome game. Uh, you're right, literal game changer. So, yeah. and those you never forget. Yeah, Doom came out uh, ninety three, so it came oh, out okay. like it came out a year and a half after Wolfenstein. So gotcha. Wolfenstein is really what put that. Yeah. Uh, to me, Wolfenstein put that first person shooter on the map. Um, I, I again, I don't remember a lot. I mean, there were first person shooters before it, but to me, this is the one that really sold it for. Oh, this one nailed it. Yeah. Yeah. This one's this one sold it for console for or mm-hmm. PC at the time. Um, so yeah, so just add, and if you've cool. never seen Wolfenstein 3D, yeah. um, definitely go back and check it out. Or as it was then, Wolfenstein. <laughs> Wolfenstein. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so a very happy 30th cool. retro birthday to Wolfenstein 3D. Um, okay, now over to news. So again, uh, we talked about this earlier. Um, it was one of my bits of news, uh, but uh, Sonic Origins not getting a physical release. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if that's. Sega leaving money on the table or not, I'd probably lean to no, um, not. But um, you know me, I'm always sad when I don't get a physical release of something. (laughs) Yeah, I I mean, people are going to buy it regardless. And, you know, who knows? Maybe it's just, yeah, their way of saving money because it's cheaper. It's got to be cheaper on their end, obviously. So um, we'll see. But things, you know, we still got a few months. So who yeah. knows? I mean, I doubt they're yeah. working with anyone. So like, no offense to Limited Run, but I don't think Limited Run is yeah. there with Sega to be able to do a limited release no. for this. So, But I think if there's a demand for it, I'm sure Sega would reverse course and release but, it on the Switch. Or they might do their own thing, make their own limited run, uh, limited edition like Nintendo did with Super Mario 3D All-Stars. Yeah, very true. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to Time see. Time to tell. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. But as of right now, if you want Sonic Origins, digital only. Okay. Uh, boo. All right, moving on. <laughs> so... Uh, this was an interesting story that I saw online. Um, Metroid. We all know the Metroid series. Mm-hmm. Um, really great on the uh, the NES. Phenomenal game on the Super Nintendo. Oh, God, yeah. And then the Metroid Prime series on GameCube. Mm-hmm. And then, obviously, fast forward to today, you got Metroid. And then all the handheld Metroids. And then yep, Metroid yep. on the um, Switch. Uh, on Switch. 
one console, one Nintendo console yeah. that is very conspicuous by its absence. The Virtual uh, Boy. No, oh. not even close. Because uh, Metroid wouldn't be caught dead on that. Wow. Um, but the Nintendo 64 never got a Metroid. Game. No, never did. I thought the I, I thought the series was dead by then. Yeah, well, I after, guess it was. Yeah. Well, it, it, it kind of was. It was dormant for yeah. a while. But um, yeah, and the reason why it didn't come out on the N64 was because um, I think the creators of it could not wrap their head around the idea of doing Samus in 3D. Like, how would we work it? And that's why we got Metroid Prime, which became a, more of a first-person shooter. That's, mm-hmm. that's how mm-hmm. they resolved it later. Yeah. They, didn't, they didn't think about doing that on the N64. Now, t- lo and behold, today, a Twitter user by the name of Luto Aquino okay. um, released on his Twitter page a video of a home-brewed Metroid 64 that he's working on. Interesting. And it looks great. And we're talking third person perspective, kind of oh. like your Tomb Raiders. Okay. Like first person. Okay. He wanted to do a, three, a third person one to show that it's possible to have a Metroid game in 3D. Hmm. And so it's just a test run. So it's literally like um, he's got Samus in the in a purple cave running around. There are no enemies. There are like white blocks okay. around. And then... You see, um, you see Samus shoot at the white blocks, but it's um, uh, it has auto target. I got you. Okay. So, um, so as you're running, it automatically targets it, and then yeah. you shoot it. Which it's is like great. a tech demo. Yeah, exactly. So it's just a tech demo to show how it works. And I got to say, it looks really good, and especially for an N64 engine, because you know, um, like we've talked about, like PS1 and N64, that whole polygonal look mm-hmm. doesn't really hold up. These no, days. it was awesome back then, but you're right. Yeah, it's a little rough now. It was awesome back then. It's incredibly rough right now. But watching Samus just in that polygon form, um, again, just nostalgia kicks in for me. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, man, I go, I would have played the hell out of this on N64. So um, for anybody who's interested in seeing how he's working on it, he's building it in Unity 3D. Okay. Um, and again, his name is Luto Aquino. Um, just look up Metroid 64 online and it'll show you. It's just, it just looks like a 3D yeah. action game. And it's really cool. So yeah, and, and another fun game to play is uh, how quickly can you get to play this demo before Nintendo sends a cease and desist? Well, there's that too. Well, again, <laughs> he's not. there's no cease and desist because there's nothing he's selling. True, but still, they. I feel like they just send them out anyway. Yeah, it's true. It's like, <laughs> stop, stop, stop making this. Stop it. We are we are against we are against people enjoying themselves um, <laughs> at our expense, uh, even though it was free. All right, so that's it for Metroid sixty four. Okay, I'm um, curious to see if he actually goes all the way and creates like a full game. Yeah, right. Right. Uh, moving on to the um, Evercade. Your, Ooh, uh, your system. I'm in. I know you're already in because you have it. I do. Thank um, you. But the uh, Evercade just announced a few days ago. They have two more arcade collections coming to the system. Oh, for real? Yep. Ooh. There is the Evercade Jaleco Arcade One. Oh, if you remember Jaleco, yeah. Um, they were a um, they were a video game developer up until the uh, early nineties, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So the um, so the Jaleco collection will include eight games. Okay. So and those games are uh, Rod Land, the uh, Astyanax, do you know that Astyanax? That doesn't sound familiar. A S T Y A N A X. Oh know. yes, yes. Okay, no, 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 no. For real, yeah. Oh, no, I said uh, Saint Dragon, Sixty Fourth Street, A Detective Story, <laughs> uh, E D F Earth Defense Force, oh. Avenging Spirit, Psy Battler, and P Forty Seven, The Phantom Fighter. Interesting. I think E D F might be on the Super Nintendo collection on the Switch, might but. Be. Everything else sounds it, and their their arcade uh, collections are 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 great. Usually, really good. Yeah. Um, and then the second collection is called the Jaelco Arcade, but I think it might be like I don't know if it's the Japanese version of Jaelco, but it's G G A E L C O because it's Jaelco Arcade Two, which makes me oh. think it's the it's the sequel to Jaelco. Yeah, no, there'll be another one. Yeah. Yeah. So the games on this one include Big Karnak, Maniac Square. Squash, TH Strikes Back, Thunder Hoop 2, Touch and Go, and World Rally 2. Oh, interesting. Okay. So, again, not not games I'm terribly familiar with. Um, but that's what's kind of cool about these collections. Yeah, and that and that's yeah. what it is, too. It's like, 
they're games you may not have heard of, so they may be interesting to play since mm-hmm. you've never played them. Uh, so both of those will be available for pre-order May 31st, and they will be released in late July. Ah, so, Larry, okay. two more collections for you. Yes. No, I'm love. I'm telling you, I'm loving these games. And just recently, um, I know um, they released, uh, they re-released the Founders Edition, the Black Edition. Mm-hmm. I literally put out a hundred of them, so that people were going nuts oh, over wow. that one. And um, there was another one. Uh, I think they re-released the handheld version in purple for a very short amount of time as well. Nice. So, um, are you gonna get a handheld one? I'm doing? debating it. Um, I think the only thing that's stopping me from getting the handheld is because you can use the handheld as a second controller. Yep. But you need a proprietary wire from Evercade to do it. Okay. Um, and right now it's out of stock. And oddly uh, enough, that's what's holding me back. But um, nevertheless, though, yeah, I'm always. I, th- I thought when it came to spending money, nothing could hold you back. So. Well, uh, lately, or. <laughs> hey, no, no, hey, no I, tr- I feel you. <laughs> I feel you. So, all right, cool. Um, I'll check those out. And then speaking of my lovely Arcade One Up, my last bit of news for this week um, Arcade One Up, um, yeah, they're, always re- they're always releasing new cabinets. Um, coming in 2022, they've already announced these before, I believe. So um, we have an NBA Jam. Um, there's an NBA Jam. Oh, um, Shack Edition. Shack Edition coming. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. There's yeah. the NBA Shack Edition coming, and then there's the Golden T 3D Golf. Oh, okay. Um, oh, you didn't hear about that one. So Golden T 3D Golf is set to release this. this I year. didn't. They're doing a newer one. They had one originally, but I didn't realize yes. they were doing a newer one. Yeah. Yeah. So they're doing a new newer one, I guess. So this one includes five titles, 19, the original Golden Tee 3D from 95, mm-hmm. and then you're getting Golden Tee 97, 98, 99, and, 2000, and 2K. Interesting. Um, interesting that you would need to do um, uh, a game every year for golf. <laughs> it's weird. Okay. Why not? Uh, bonus games on it, though. Two oh. bonus games on it as well. So if you don't just want to play golf, there will also be Shuffle Shot and World Class Bowling. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of fun. Yeah. So pretty, yeah, pretty full, uh, pretty full uh, cabinet. But the mm-hmm. real news that I wanted to uh, say is that I may, be, I may be getting another Arcade 1-Up cabinet based on this one. Oh. Uh, but uh, a few days ago, Arcade 1-Up has, re- re- has revealed that they are releasing a Dragon's Lair Arcade. Oh, cabinet. wow. And it's not, it's, it will include Dragon's Lair, mm-hmm. Dragon's Lair 2, Time Warp, and space ace oh, oh man and uh oh man uh i gotta share my screen oh okay it's love it's just love. oh the way the cabinet looks uh i can only imagine it's, it's just beautiful uh you know the art is great it's just i'm very happy can you see that, that does look yeah that looks see that's what i'm actually jealous about with your cabinet as well because i i can see it here you have the i mean granted it's it's fake but you have the uh no 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 no. i have a rise on mine the coin slot oh yours doesn't have i don't have the coin slot on mine uh yeah it and you know what they're just they're they're made of plastic they're yeah no you can't put a quarter in it yeah yeah no it's just it's just there for you know no no but it's it's beautiful yeah Yeah. i love it but uh yeah oh man no that cabinet looks fantastic i may have to Oh man, uh, it, it, it's gonna be. Th- if this becomes my new addiction, I'm in trouble. Because it's like, where do you put these things? No, that's trust me. I, if if I had the room, I'd have a Simpsons arcade already. Yep. Actually, if I just not even didn't have the, if I didn't have this table that I'm at right yep. now, I would have a Simpsons arcade machine already. Yeah, but that well, and that's the reason. Like, and that's the reason why I kind of I held out for a while too because I wanted like a four player one. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Wanted a four player one. I got gotcha. you. Um. So yeah, but anyway, uh, Dragon's Lair. Very exciting. Uh, yeah, we'll see what happens if I awesome. can around that one. But uh, And that's it for this week's Retro News. I mean, All sure. right. Yeah. Well, I think that might be enough anyway. So we will yep. wrap this one up. Cool. And uh, Ant, in the meantime, enjoy. Have you played a lot of the arcade machine yet? I have. <laughs> and it I should try, be a good know, exercise. Yeah, it, it's good exercise. I, I did try um, Galactic Storm because I had never played that before. Okay. Um, and I don't know any of the moves. So. <laughs> do you know the characters at least? I do know all of the characters. Oh, okay, good. So, um, and I think all of them, well, no, not all of them have been represented in the cinematic universe yet. Oh, but, interesting. All right. Yeah, not all of them. So nice. people will probably play and be like, wait, who's that? <laughs> exactly. 
because no one knows the comics anymore. It's all about the big screen. It's all about the movies. No. All right. Well, uh, oh, you know, one final thing to mention real quick. You didn't have it in the news, I don't know, uh, but just uh, I saw it last night real quick. Um, officially speaking, and I think a, a big round of applause for Sonic, since we mentioned him before, uh, Sonic the Hedgehog 2 is now the official number one money-making video game movie of all time. In the United States. In the United States yeah. of all time. Yes. Um, World, World of Warcraft has a beat globally. Really? Well, yeah. Well, World of Warcraft, I think, made somewhere around like 540 million, I think, globally. Yikes. I mean, it was an okay movie, but at yeah, any event. I, I think um, Sonic, Sonic is hovering around 290. Right, we still got time. We still got time. But uh, nevertheless, uh, hey, look, it, well, we live yeah. in the U.S., so. Yeah, big accomplishment. In the U.S., yes. So very cool. And actually, I couldn't ask for a better movie. Uh, so uh, very cool on that. And enjoy. Enjoy X-Men. I will. You enjoy your week as well. I will. And, folks, we'll catch you everywhere next week on the Retro Wait Gamers. Wait a second. Oh, what? Wait a second. What? What? Don't we have to tell people where to find us? Wow. That is That was my weekend. And where can they find us? Uh, you guys can find us on Facebook.com slash Retro Gamers Podcast, on Instagram at Retro Gamers Podcast. You can find us on Twitter at Retro Gamers Pod. You can listen to us wherever you listen to podcasts. You can watch us on YouTube or you can email us at email at the Retro uh, And if you are concerned about Larry's memories, uh, which I currently <laughs> am now because I think he's starting to lose it, oh, um, yeah. please tell us about it. Totally, totally forgot, honestly. Oh, well. I know you did. Well, with that being said, we'll catch you everywhere, maybe, next week on the Retro Gamers Podcast.